Hi there, hope you're having a lovely day so far. Well, when trying to entertain toddlers and preschoolers, there is no doubt that they can be a tough crowd. But during home isolation, there are lots of challenges um, and they are only magnified as we're unable to take them outdoors to burn off all of their energy in their usual activities activities and daily activities like daycare, kinder, preschool, play centres, the park, the playground, the library, play dates, while well, the list can just go on and on and on. <laughs> so the question is really, how can we keep our little ones entertained and engaged in and around the home? Well, lucky for us today, we're joined by Bree from B Minor Music, who's here to help. Now, Bree is going to share some fresh ideas and strategies that um, is going to help you um, sort of break up the, the monotony of um, life, home in isolation. Now, Bree is the owner and operator of Melbourne's only child-led music program called Be Minor Music. Now, Bree has over 15 years experience as an early childhood educator and is a mother of three gorgeous kids. Now, Bree has also published her own nonsense song book called Get Ready For It, The Dibble Dabble Ding Dang Bonkers Song. <laughs> I hope I said it right. <laughs> and she also <laughs> produces, produces her own music for children, which is played on the likes of uh, Little Rockers Radio, who Kitty Peter is also partnered with, and Kinderlink um, Radio, and is uh, available on iTunes and all good online music stores. Thank you so much for joining us today, Bree. How are you? My pleasure. So, well, it's so good to be here. I'm well, thank you. How are you? We're really good, really good. And as we were just saying before, I just would love to be able to hug you, but at the moment, it's just a virtual hug. I feel like so. Virtual hug. Have Now, parents, um, you know, all around Australia are just really starting to appreciate the work of our early years educators and, you know, all of the incredible work that they do do. Now, you worked in the early years sector for many years. Um, you know, I'd love to, to get your thoughts um, on this new sense of appreciation that parents do have uh, for our early years educators. I think, um, I think some people knew how much early childhood educators did in their jobs, uh, but keeping their children at home now and trying to come up with new activities and ideas and everything um, to make sure that their children are developing, mm. uh, parents found out how hard the job really is. <laughs> Um, so I, I'm hoping that they'll get a little bit more credit, um, especially from the government now that, you know, their, their role has been so important, especially during isolation. Yeah. And it's the same with all of our nurses and frontline staff as well. I think everybody has a completely new sense of appreciation um, for the incredible work that they do do. Um, you know, and um, you know, and I guess where primary school and secondary school age children are currently being homeschooled at the moment, um, it's not much different with parents of preschoolers. But if anything, parents with school age children may be receiving um, a little more support as classes are quite structured and supported by te technology um, from that perspective and also with, through, through the teacher's support. Now you're a busy mum of three gorgeous kids who you know that I absolutely adore uh, and two of them are in primary school. Um, so I wanted to get your yeah. thoughts um, on this at the moment, the fact that um, the preschool um, children are possibly not receiving as much support um, from um, from the child care centres, kindergarten, preschool, uh, as much as primary aged and secondary aged children. What are your thoughts? Mm. I think um, from some of the centres that I've spoken to and kindergartens that I've spoken to, uh, they're slowly, as the weeks roll on, um, are starting to realise that a lot of their families aren't able to make the program for various reasons and uh, some are sending out experiences. Uh, I know, for example, um, if I'm doing a, a music session, they, some of the families will be given a link to that session at home so that they can still join in. Yeah. Uh, but it's not a daily thing. So with school, you, you know, most schools are doing their daily activities. Some schools are doing online classes uh, where they're face-to-face -face with the teachers. Uh, whereas at kindy, you, you really don't have the ability to do that because you've still got children in your care who are more needy uh, yes. than, you know, the children that go to primary school so it's a, it's a really hard one for them yeah you know it's been said that parents are not meant to replace the teachers at this time rather um support their their, their children um and their teachers whilst um the the 
distant learning is being facilitated um, and, mm -hmm. and, and homeschooling is in place. So in saying this, um, there are many early childhood teaching philosophies and techniques, one in particular which is very well known called the Reggio Emilia um, philosophy and technique, um, that this particular one pr prioritises play-based hands-on learning over a, a prescribed curriculum per se, with the likes of Montessori and, and different sort of teaching techniques. So in saying that, for any parent that is concerned about their, their child's early education, um, this particular technique is something that all parents can easily facilitate and manage from home, given that it's play-based. So um, provided your experience in the sector for so many years, can you explain a little bit more about this, just to put some parents at ease? Sure. So research shows that um, under the age of seven, play-based is the most uh, important uh, way to learn. So um, basically just get, getting activities for your children and allowing them to learn through play. And that can be anything. So, um, you know, you can, you can have a bunch of pencils, for example, and ask a child to sort them into uh, different piles, you know, by their colour. Mm -hmm. And then you can count how many pencils are in each pile. Um, now, to somebody you might think, well, you know, that's fairly simple, but in that you're learning about your colours, you're learning language, you're learning numeracy, um, fine motor skills from picking up the pencils. So you, you can do play-based experiences and develop in most areas just within one activity. Yes, and play-based can sort of go across, um, as you just mentioned, from numeracy, from maths, from colours, um, but also through art activities and music, which of course, you know, you're an expert in as well. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, uh, just little things like, say, for example, I've got the bells behind me. Uh, you could do an experience where, you know, there's eight uh, bells in an octave and you can count them up and down and, and you know, sing some songs and things like that. Um, and through that, you learn, you're actually using your left and your right side of your brain at the same time. So, um, but to a child, they're just singing bells and, and singing songs. So they don't, they're not even aware that they're learning, which is the most beautiful thing. Yes. Well, I me mean, in saying this, how can parents of preschool age children help encourage play-based activities at home to help with um, their children to explore, to experiment, to discover and solve problems in imaginative and playful ways. Yeah. Um, so one of my most favourite experiences to do is uh, to fill a container with water and then pop some toys inside and then you pop it in the freezer and then once it's frozen, you give the child the container and you ask them to take the toys out. And this experience can take sometimes hours. Um, I know with my children, sometimes they'll start on it and then they'll pop it back in the freezer and then they'll bring it out an, another time and, and this can continue for days. Um, and it's a great science experiment because, you know, you've got to think, okay, what can I do to make this um, process go quicker? Uh, so they might put their warm hands on the, the ice to make it melt. They might take it into the yard and get the sun to shine on it to melt. Um, you know, some children who are more physical might um, bash it with, a, you know, some forks and stuff like that to try and chip away at the ice. And, and, and then there's that reward at the end where, you know, oh, I finally got the toys. And, and then most likely they'll then play with the toys, which will uh, enable role playing. Um, so, you know, this can be like an activity that goes on for hours. Mm -hmm. which I absolutely love. Um, good old Play-Doh, you know, play, if Play-Doh goes back to the end of time in childcare, it's one of the staple experiences in, in rooms from babies through to preschool. Um, most people have the ingredients around your house. Uh, I'll pop up a link um, for the recipe, my favourite recipe. Mm -hmm. um, and, and with Play-Doh also, you can either have it uh, by itself or you can add like if, if your child's uh, interest is dinosaurs, uh, you can make a little village and pop the dinosaurs in with the Play-Doh and the Play-Doh can be the grass or the Play-Doh can be the trees. Um, you know, you can pop farm animals in. Um, you know, I, I personally like to make Play-Doh just white, so not adding any colour at all. And that way the children are more likely to use their imagination and it becomes, you know, many different things. Yeah. Um, uh, other things, um, make your own paint, same thing um, with, with just uh, simple corn flour and water and dye, you can make your own paint um, and you can make, you know, your own puff paint as well. So things like that mm -hmm. um, are great experiences. And I don't know whether you've heard about the rainbow trail. Have you heard about the rainbow trail? No. 
Okay, so there's a Facebook page um, called The Rainbow Trail that was started during isolation and it's basically encouraging people to make rainbows, to make other people happy. Uh, so it started with some um, drawing on, on the sidewalk with chalk, uh, which my children did and I think we spent about five hours just sitting down on the street drawing. Um, I, I don't think you're actually allowed on the street now, but if you have a driveway, um, you can do that or if you've got, you know, bricks or whatever on your house, you can draw, um, you know, like coloured blocks or rainbows um, or you might like to put a rainbow in your window. You can either paint it or use post-it notes or anyway, create, be creative with, with whatever you've got in your house. But that's a good day experience. Uh, yeah. um, and then it makes passers by happy. Yeah, and I've actually seen a lot of those um, posts on Facebook as well, which is which has been beautiful to see actually with the colours and everything else, and the, the footpath. So yeah, and look, we've got yeah. lots of articles and links that we'll sort of have um, that we've published recently as well. Um, lots of sort of play um, ideas and that sort of stuff as well, because we are of course going into the colder months. And either way, um, aside from COVID nineteen, we're still going to be indoors. Um, so, you know, either way, we'll, uh, we'll have some additional sort of support links and that sort of stuff as well. Um, it's also been said yeah. that, you know, that preschool students um, often stay more engaged and alert um, when you use a kind of variety of different materials and switch activities, say, every 15 minutes or less, depending on the age of the child. Now, as a question, I'd love to know, do you personally think that parents should combine different activities throughout the day for best results to keep the children engaged and entertained and or on the flip side is it beneficial to enable children to become bored and this would enable them to use their own ima imagination for the sake of developing their own uh, sense of creativity and lateral thinking yeah now I think um, both things are really important so for me personally um, I would prefer to allow my children um, to get bored and then they can, through boredom, is where you create the most beautiful experiences. Um, so I think it's really important for children at all stages of their lives to go through boredom because that's where they, um, you know, they're using their brain. Okay, what am I going to do to get myself out of this boredom and everything like that? I have a saying that, that my children hate, but I say only boring people get bored. <laughs> so yeah. basically... Um, if you're bored, it means you're not using your brain. Like you've got to think, okay, how can I get out of this situation? Um, but there are also some children that really respond well to having constant activity. So I think it's a very personal thing. And I think parents know their children better than anyone else and they know what works. So if your children thrive up activities and they need to be stimulated constantly through active learning, um, then the activities is a good way to go. Or if your child thrives off being left alone and, um, you know, working out their own activities through themselves, then I think that that's a really important thing to let your child do. Mm. In an interview the other day, I was speaking with Dr. Tessa Grigg, um, the Research and Development Manager at um, Jimboro Kin Kindiru, and on that particular topic, she was saying it's even, like, with some of the the, um, the home kitchen, you know, the toy things that, the kids have where they sort of have their little kitchen and everything else they, they're great but what's even better is actually creating one and having a child make that out of a cardboard box and actually using their imagination to be able to create the likes of that as opposed to it being given to them um, which is still great don't get me wrong and they're fantastic for play-based activities but it's also great to be able to say okay great well, we don't have one of those let's go to a supermarket um, or Aldi or wherever else so that have got these big boxes um, and let's, let's create one of those so it, it is I guess um, partly for um, us adult, adults to, to think bigger and from a, a lateral perspective um, and because I really believe that children's imagination is, is incredibly expansive and we as adults have probably become more rigid in our thinking as opposed to what a child's imagination and thought process has the, the capacity and the ability to do. So sometimes we only need to provide some of the, the most basic of materials for them to have an open-ended um, sort of play experience. So, 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 so just to clarify, so you're saying that it's probably just as important to have a little bit of column A, being that we, we do sort of change up the activities throughout the day to keep them stimulated, engaged, and entertained but equally yep. um, it is good to mix in a little bit of opportunity for boredom to help them develop their sense of creativity in lateral thinking so you yep. said bit of a bit of a. I, I, 
um, it's so important for families to to not get caught up in the, you know, I must do this for my child. And um, I think expectations are so high on people. And I know there's a lot of uh, preschool, um, parents of preschool children who are, are scared because they're just like, okay, this is a really important year for my child because they're just about to go into primary school and that's where they need to learn their pre-literacy skills and everything like that. Um, it, you can learn pre-literacy skills through play. So they don't necessarily have to be sitting down and tracing letters and, and going through the, the numbers and their alphabet and everything like that. As long as you're reading and you're singing and you're talking, um, you know, point out things around the house and, um, you know, you might have a, a poster with words on it or whatever. Uh, start to talk about the letters that are in that. And um, a, a great um, one is if they're watching TV, uh, put subtitles on. So they won't be reading the subtitles, but the words will be going there. And over time, they might start to kind of go, oh, when that person says and, A-N-D, that those letters keep on coming up. And over time, they might associate you know, certain words uh, with those letters and things like that. So, yeah. So yeah, you can you be smart about it. <laughs> yeah. And so look, what, what are some other great experiences to do around the home um, for pre-primary um, age children during isolation? You've mentioned some. Do you have any other ideas at all? Uh, yeah. So uh, one of my favourite ones, um, other than the ice, the ice is my all-time favourite, is um, sink and float. So basically you just go around your house, um, grab a container of water yeah. and grab a whole heap of items and um, you just uh, guess which ones are going to sink and which ones are going to float and then you pop them all in the water um, and you know you can make it if you've got siblings you can make it a competition um, if, you know even if uh, like I've got uh, my youngest is three and my oldest is ten and they still like to compete with each other and surprisingly sometimes a three-year-old will get it right over the ten-year-old so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's a, um, they have lots of fun doing that one. The other one is magnets. If you've got something that's um, magnetic, uh, walk around the house and, and see which parts of the house are magnetic. And you'll, you'll be really surprised that, um, you know, things that you would never have thought uh, have magnets in them actually do. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's a great one. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then you've got the old fun um, forts. It's like you can't go wrong with a day of forts. You know, you transform your lounge room into blankets and, you know, you can use um, pegs and elastic bands to tie around chairs and everything like that. And, you know, get the children in there, give them a picnic lunch in there. Like, you, you won't see them for the whole day. You know, they'll, they'll spend the whole day either, you know, making the fort or hiding in the fort. And, um, you know, they can even sleep out in the lounge room for the night. Like, you know, make, make it a whole day, night kind of experience and... Rainy, sort of yeah. cold, wintry days are perfect for fort building, hey? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's, right. that's right. And, then, you know, the other great thing that you mentioned, you know, with the weather getting colder uh, is obstacle courses inside because children, oh. uh, they have physical activities. Um, and if you're okay with um, using your furniture, you know, you can do great obstacle courses. Like you can use cushions to jump over. Um, that you, They can do forward rolls down the hallway uh, you can um, run in and out of chairs, you use tables as tunnels. Um, if you're a, a little bit more lapsed with um, allowing your children to do things around the home, they, they can jump up, up onto the kitchen bench and onto the table and jump down and, you know, do a nice motorbike landing to, try, you know, get their gross motor skills. Um, it's really important at this stage um, for children. I know with my children, if they've been sitting for, so, you know, for too long, I'll be like, all right, quick. 20 jumping jacks each and they'll just quickly get up and do 20 jumping jacks. And by the time they've finished those, then they're just like, oh, I'm up and doing stuff. And then they'll go off and, and do something physical because they're, yeah. they're now up and there's a little bit of adrenaline pumping through their body. Yeah, yeah. And on the flip side of that, what about online experiences? Um, would you be recommending this sort of stuff during this time? And in, in your view, how can parents take advantage of technology um, like sort of during home, home isolation? Yeah, there are so many things online right now. Um, I think that you know, the world's embraced being online and that the beauty of being online now is that you can access things from overseas that you were never able to access yeah. um, or in state, for example. So there might be a program that's been running in Queensland that you've always wanted to do, but you, know, you live in Melbourne. Um, and now you can access those programs. But um, in particular, like my all-time favourite is Kevin and Sarah. 
So I'm not sure if you've heard of them before, um, but they're teachers, they're two teachers who are also children's performers. And they've got a website called The Cub Club. And in The Cub Club, they have like perfect for preschool and early primary years. Um, they do the alphabet jam, they do things about phonics, about counting. Um, and so it's all uh, learning literacy and numeracy skills through songs. And they also do amazing songs um, about manners, about self-worth. Oh, um, I love that. About, you know, feelings and things like that. So um, like, they just get everything right. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I cannot recommend them enough. All right. Well, let's um, see if we can get a link to the Cub Club as well. Yes, yeah, so I will definitely pop them in. And they're also on YouTube as well. Um, and and with, within their, uh, the Cub Club, they have uh, worksheets and everything like that that go along with them. Oh, their wow. Cool. So you could pretty much do a whole day's lesson plan just on Kevin and Sarah alone. <laughs> um, but other things are, so um, there's a, a, a um, children's couch time that's going on. They've just released the first one, uh, which has 11 Australian uh, children's performers. Yeah. Um, on, um, and they've all uh, put their own performances from within their house. Into oh, I love that. Concert. <laughs> uh, a new one will be coming out, I think, next week. So they're doing Couch Time 2. And that includes uh, people like the Micmacs, Vegetable Plot, uh, Livy Kids Music. Um, I'm in there. Emily, it's hosted by Emily Who, who's um, just the most Who? adorable children's <laughs> performance. Who? <laughs> what? Um, and uh, there's so many more that I, I can't think of right now. Um, but uh, I've got written down because there's, there's so many people the tiptoe giants tiptoe giants have got a great um song about uh coughing and sneezing into your elbow mm -hmm. uh Libby Kids music also has like a really cool hand washing song uh the micmacs have done a hand washing song um i think the teeny tiny the tiny stevies might have done one as well so there's lots of um children's performers that have brought out all of these songs that are relevant to the now, like what we're going through. And I think it's really important for children to um, watch that. And Play School has also done yeah. a, an amazing episode um, about coronavirus, um, which even one of my children referenced this morning about, you know, um, washing your hands and, and having the germs on your hands and everything. And we were just like, oh, where did you learn that? And he said, you know, through Play School. So, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, That's there's... Um, so many. And Debbie Do, if you haven't heard of Debbie Do, she's got a YouTube channel. Uh, she does lots of movement um, uh, uh, shows. Yep. So um, basically it's encouraging the family to get up and dance. She uses a lot of the old classics and some of her new stuff. Um, and so it's like that perfect mix and just great to get the kids up and moving. Yeah. Cool. So I was reading that short five to 15 minute video lessons, games, or even online quizzes covering maybe, you know, for, for younger children, one or two key concepts can be really quite useful. So short snappy videos, as you were just suggesting, you know, that would grab their attention through music and, and lessons, um, you know, picking the interest, like you were saying, if it is teaching them how to cough into their elbow or have you in, um, you know, these types of short, snappy videos can really help get them ready to apply their knowledge. Um, so that's really great. And thank you for, for sharing those links. And we'll, we'll have those links in the introduction paragraph as well. But as you just mentioned just earlier on, that movement is so beneficial, which we know as well in so many ways. Um, and unsurprisingly, it's um, movement is great for learning. Um, and I've read, and there's a lot of research, research that supports this, that um, sort of shows that students learn better when they allowed and even encouraged to move around the classroom um, and I know in a lot of your programs you do for B minor I mean that's I guess the basis of what you, you, you're doing as well I'm guessing so like what are your thoughts on encouraging physical activity during the day basically as a great way to mix up things and keep um, you know your children home and, and motivated yeah I think uh, movement is so important for learning and you know, that, that's why we have, uh, when the children are at school, they have recess and they have lunch so they can get out and get all of that energy out of their body. Um, <clears throat> there's some great um, products that are created for children who need to move. So while they're sitting at the table, there's wobble stools um, or elastic bands that you pop around the legs of chairs so children can constantly move their legs or, you know, fidget toys. Um, fidget spinners were quite popular 
um, a while back. Um, but they're not only popular, but they're great for children who need to actually fidget if they've been sitting for too long. Um, if not, the children need to get up. They need to be upside down. They need to spin. Um, so it's really important, you know, um, so I know sometimes people will get frustrated that their children are, you know, will watch television upside down on the couch or, you know, they'll constantly be doing handstands and stuff. Actually, if a child's doing that, their body's craving that movement and they need to actually do that in order for them to take in the schoolwork or, or take in the experience um, that, that you want them to learn. So, yeah, neat. I think, um, yeah, getting children up and moving is really important. And as you said, um, you know, for younger children, 15 minutes, definitely, uh, half an hour at the most. I know uh, in childcare there used to be a saying that um, you double the child's age and that's how long uh, they should have an attention span for. So oh. if a child's one, they actually should only have a two-minute attention span. Now, I know from my personal experience um, that if a child's engaged, that you know, they'll engage for 40 minutes or longer. Um, but ideally, um, you know, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour tops is um, what you'd want a child to be actually sitting down and concentrating. And if you can see, if they're struggling, don't push them. You know, they're obviously, um, you know, and that like sometimes um, you might see a child uh, in an experience and they're looking away or they're running around. Um, that's fine because they're actually taking what they can in through, sometimes children need to run away in order to be able to take in the information that you're trying to tell them. Mm. Okay, and what, what's the best way, I guess, for the family as a whole as well to, to use the opportunity of movement and staying physically, mentally healthy during isolation? Um, I, I think one of the most beautiful things right now is to get out and go for a walk, like while weather permitting, um, unless it's unsafe, even if it's raining and it's cold, you know, rug up warm, get out. There's so many beautiful things going on in the world right now, you know, the, the air's clearer, it's cleaner because there's less people on the road and, and you know, less factories operating and stuff like that. Um, and if you've been stuck inside, just going outside, you know, for an hour every day, you're getting your vitamin D, uh, your, your gross motor skills through walking and just it's mentally uplifting. You know, yes. you see beautiful things when you're outside. So uh, that's probably the most important thing. Um, ride your bikes, your scooters. Uh, yoga um, and Pilates are a really good one. There's a lot of online um, children's yoga programs. Um, you know, they use animals uh, to do the, the poses, the yoga poses and stuff like that. Um, just any form of movement that you can. Or the best, like most fun thing, put on the radio and have a dance. Make a playlist on YouTube and, and you know, start the day with, with a, a YouTube playlist and yep. that'll get everybody's endorphins all, you know, pumping and, it, like, it'll just start the day really nice. We, um, we recently published an article, um, 170 things to do to keep the kids busy in isolation. And there's a few of them on that list that break it down to sort of say, well, make a playlist of songs in the 70s and explain what the 70s were to the kids. Do the same things for the 80s, for the 90s, for the... What, what do we call the two, 2000s? I don't know, the noughts. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's a really nice way to be able to teach, you know, a, a few different things um, and, you know, sort of say, well, at this time in my life I was doing this or what have you, you know. So there's different ways to be able to encourage music uh, into, into the kids' lives at the moment as well. Um, and then... And then on that, with with be, be minor music, you've actually moved from actually doing physical classes within the um, the services in and around sort of the northern suburbs of Melbourne, and it, you've now I'm guessing and tell us a little bit more. You've now had to sort of pivot the business a little bit and and operate it obviously just um, from an online perspective. Tell us, um, I guess, what you're doing and how parents can sort of help um, sort of you know, stay involved and, and also access your services as well. Yeah. Uh, so basically, I used to run five days a week um, face to face sessions. Now I'm five days a week online. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, most of my sessions back then were through childcare centres, and I've, I had a few public. Now it's turned around. Uh, so most of my sessions now are public and just a few childcare centres. Um, every Wednesday, I do a free Facebook Live um, at 11 o'clock. And awesome. then on the other days, uh, if you check out on my website, beminermusic.com, and I've got a um, all of the classes listed each week. Some of them are changing as the weeks go on, mm -hmm. um, depending on uh, what things come up. 
Um, but yeah, main, they're mainly at either 10 or 11 in the morning and 2.30 in the afternoon um, with the option of possibly doing an after school one because I'm finding that a lot of uh, grade preps and grade ones that, that I used to attend my sessions are now wanting to come back. So um, stay tuned if anyone's interested. Um, I'm trying to work out a time uh, that suits parents at the moment, um, whether they want an after school or while they're cooking dinner to keep their children entertained. So, so just yeah. to clarify, so the ages that your classes are for, for, for what ages? Uh, anywhere from four, year, uh, four months through to generally about seven or eight years old. But there's no, you know, there's no age limit. So if a 99 year old person, you know, is enjoying themselves, they're welcome. And, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> if, if, a, if a child, you know, is interested, it's basically, um, uh, you know, and, and there's, there's people with intellectual disabilities too that are adults that, you know, sometimes enjoy attending B minor music sessions. So I'm not limited to age. Um, it, it's whoever enjoys yeah music and what i do and is this something that um, families all around australia can access the facebook page to be able to access those classes are they closed groups um you know and what part of melbourne are you sort of operating in okay um so anyone in australia or overseas um can access them there so i do all my sessions through zoom except for the wednesday one which is through facebook um, so if you yeah if you go to be um all of the information's in there telling you um, so once you pay for a session, um, then I give you the links and everything like that. And they're closed groups, except, yeah, except for the Facebook one. All right, fantastic. Well, thanks so much for your time today, Brief. Uh, parents have any other questions for you um, and or want to reach you after this chat, whereabouts can they find you? Uh, they can find me at bemindermusic.com or come over to my Facebook page or Instagram page. And yeah, feel free to ask me any questions. I've got lots more ideas to come um, and so many more links that, that I'd love to share with you. Um, there's so many amazing children's artists and activities, children's activities going on around Australia right now. Yes. Um, and I'd love to share as many as I can with you because there's some great businesses out there. We'll, we'll um, include as many of those links as we can in the introduction paragraph, that's for sure. Well, look, thank you so much for your time today and just can't wait to chat with you again. Give my love to the kids. Big love. My pleasure. So good to see you. Thanks, right. everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.